Hello everyone, welcome to our Instagram and Pinterest for food and tourism webinar. My name's Amanda, this is me, and I'm here with... I'm Lorna, how are you? And we don't, we do really look like that, do yes, we? Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start off with Instagram today. So I'm going to cover the first half an hour or so, and then Lorna is going to talk about Pinterest. Did I say Instagram? Yes, you did. Yes. So we're going to start with Instagram. Um, firstly, what is Instagram? So if you're not using it yet, you might be thinking, oh, what is it? Why should I use it? And I know when I first started on Instagram, I just used it because it had nice filters. So all these nice photos popping up in my stream, and I saw they were all coming from Instagram, so I joined it. But it's so much more than that, as you probably know. It's a social network. So um, you can follow people, people follow you, you like and you comment on each other's photos. You upload your photos. It's a mobile-only app. That's worth knowing. You can't upload from the web. Anyone that tells you you can be very suspicious because Instagram closed down any accounts they find that do that. And, of course, filters is what it's all about. 70s, 80s looking filters is what attracted to me at first. So you get kind of that, you can get that kind of faded look that you get on photos, or you can make things really stand out in that kind of low mo plastic camera sort of look. So, why should you use it? It's all about photographs, it's all very pretty, but it is one of the biggest social, growing social networks in the world and in Ireland. It grew its active users by 50% in the last year, so it's really accelerating. Business Instagram posts, and I've actually found this myself, you know, you kind of lose heart in Facebook, but you're getting 58% more engagement on Instagram than on Facebook. You do have to be aware that a lot of that is probably irrelevant, but it is really nice to know that people are actually seeing your posts. It really does make a difference. And you can connect directly with customers. So it's like Twitter. You can go out there, you can find people on Instagram, you can just spark a conversation with them. So it's a fantastic way to find new people to connect with that will be interested in what you do. And it's fabulous for word of mouth recommendations. So when somebody comes to your business, somebody eats in your restaurant, some comes to visit your hotel, they can take photographs, they can share them out on Instagram, they'll tag your hotel, they'll tell people where they are, so it means it will bring people back into you. And a great source for user-generated content exactly for that reason. So they're creating the content, then with their permission, you can go on and you can regram that content and share it with your users. So it's a great kind of circular system. And the biggest question, I suppose, is with any social network, what is it that you should be posting? You obviously have to come up with content on a regular basis, so it can be hard to decide what you want to post. So the first thing, people. The people in your business, they're, they're representing you, and they're the people that people see at the front end of your business, and they can get to know them before they visit. So I love this. Green Bus Dublin have taken photos of, I don't know if it's all their bus drivers, but a lot of their bus drivers. And yeah, he's a friendly face that I would like to bring on a tour. And actually, do check out their account, because since I've started following their account, they do this ghost bus tour, and I, I really want to go on it as a result of seeing the account. So it's an account that's really working. And this is somebody from the Guggenheim Museum. Again, another staff member. They're congratulating her. Um, again, she, it's a face behind the business. And with an art gallery, they do really, really feel like stuffy businesses. So if you can give people that kind of snippet of, of real people, it really helps. Showing off your product or service. So I've got um, two examples here. This is Ballyhass Lakes. And I think it's kite surfing that they do there, or it's, it's some sort of windsurfing. But it just looks like great fun, isn't it? A great shot in action. I'd say that's mm. probably taken with a GoPro camera, which are the ones you can put on your helmet yeah. that take it. But isn't it an amazing shot? Yeah. Again, it's something I see that and I go, oh, I'd love to give that a go. No, I don't know if my legs are up for it, but there you go. And this one, um, just for another action adventure, um, one day I do have to go to Puerto Rico and I do need to actually uh, visit this, this place. It's beautiful. Um, I'd love to learn to surf there. I think that's where I want to go. You can post reviews up. Now, I would say you can't post reviews constantly. You have to post some of your nice imagery as well. But what I really like about Staple Foods is they mix them in. So anytime they get a review, say on their Facebook page, if it's on Yelp, wherever they get it, they screen cap it and they put it up. And it's a great endorsement. Yes, we are good. People say we're good. And what's really nice is this example, they got a review on Love in Dublin. And you can see all the people who are congratulating them for it. So it's, it's really nice from that point of view. And behind the scenes in your business. So, you know, in the old days, we used to go into shops and talk to people. And we don't do that so much any, anymore. So it's really nice to know there are actually human beings there. So if you order something online or if you send someone down to the shop for you, you still feel like you're part of the business when you see what they're getting up to. So this is a happy pair. They're off to the Body and Soul Festival. Um, and this is packing the van. Um, and I didn't even know they were going to Body and Soul. That would actually almost make me go there myself. 
And this um, complete contrast to Shelburne Hotel, who ran a wedding event. So this is um, a shot, and they've actually regrammed it from somebody. But it's the models getting ready for the fashion show. So I, I think that's a really kind of it is it, it builds anticipation about what's going to happen. Quotes, as you probably know, are hugely popular on all social media. And I have to say, I'm not really a fan, but I think if you find the right quote and you create a really nice image around it, they can really, really work. So I don't like quotes in general, but of course, there's always one that re resonates with me. And I like this one, humble pie does not satisfy hunger. And what I like about this is where it's a real life object. They've gone and written that on a bit of brown paper. And that's kind of the essence of Instagram. It's about real life found objects. So it works really well as an Instagram post. And another one I found from um, actually another great account worth following is the Hotel Myriac, I think it's called in Galway. They have an amazing Instagram account. Again, want to go stay there now. Um, and this is a coffee mug, again, with a quote on. So it's taking it a little bit outside, just kind of those images we see on Facebook with a plain background, you know, creating something a little bit more interesting from your quotes. Tapping into anything that's happening locally. So, you know, if you're a food business or a tourism business, you are really tapping into a local market or people that have come to visit. So this is the Shelbourne Hotel. It's bike week. They've decided that they're going to send a couple of people out on a cycle. So um, a great image. I saw this. It appealed to me straight away. I knew why it was there without even having to see the bike week tag. And of course, it was Bloomsday recently. Mm -hmm. And this one from the Sandy Mount Hotel, they went out, they took some photos around town um, during it. And what I like about this is it's not, this isn't happening at the Sandy Mount Hotel as far as I can see. They've just gone and taken pictures, which means that tourists that come in and that are interested in doing things for Bloomsday, that look at the tag, will find the hotel. Mm -hmm. No, it's not a case of this is happening at the hotel. There will just be the people in the know about what's going on in Dublin. So I think that's really effective. And then humour. I just love this. I actually, I, I have to try this ice cream. It's a dairy-free ice cream. It's made in Ireland. But um, isn't that brilliant? Mm. It's just, you know, it's there's a moment well, when they must have thought, wouldn't that be amazing if yeah. we just took the pot and made it look like our baby was popping yeah. out the top? It's yeah. really great. And humour, you know, any sort of emotion, and obviously you want positive emotion around your brand, anything you can create that way will really help you be memorable to people. So I'm never going to forget that image, I think. Mm. And, of course, you can do promotions as well. Again, just remember it's Instagram. It's about beautiful visual content. So don't kind of do anything that looks too spammy. Don't do something that looked like it was created in Word. So this is promoting an event that they have coming up here, again, at the, that hotel in Galway. And it looks like they've used Canva, which is a really useful tool for creating imagery to create that. It's just there's a specific look around Canva images mm -hmm. that you get used to. But it is. It's an attractive image. It wouldn't put me off going there. It doesn't put me off seeing it in the Instagram feed. They're better at it than me. Mm, I, think um, so. I think it's really good. And, yeah, it would totally sell me on the idea of their supper club if I was living close by chocolate too. Mm -hmm. Can't beat chocolate. So now you know what to post and need to look at creating content. So I've got a couple of tools. We're going to talk about um, collages today. And I like collages. I think collages work exceptionally well on Instagram because you can tell a story. You can put three or four images together to tell a story to say, you know, the process of what it's going through. Or if it was a Blooms Festival, you could take three or four different sorts of images and put it together for Bloomsday and have a Bloomsday collage on your website rather than on your website on Instagram. Rather than perhaps flooding the stream with 20 photos, you could create a few nice collages that really make it stand out. Um, it shows different ways of doing things. So you could, if you've got a, um, a bedroom that you can do up as a twin room, as a, a double room, you could do that. If you've got, um, if you do ice cream like Nobo, you could have four different ways that you could serve the ice cream. You know, there's things you can do along those lines. Before and after shots can work really well. So that would, for the example of the wedding fair, that would work exceptionally well. And one thing is, if you don't take amazing photographs, you can put them together and they'll look better in a collage. So that can help as well. And you can crop out all the nasty bits. So I love this example from Eli Winebars. Um, this is them preparing oysters. And I'm sure anyone that likes oysters, I don't. But I'm sure that's very appealing to people um, to see them kind of fresh coming in mm. and then opened up and they're ready for eating. And this one from Shell's Cafe as well. It's really cool. It's showing that you know, they're preparing for a banquet and there's everyone sitting there enjoying the banquet. There's a nice story behind that, isn't it? It is. And just at a guess, these are using two of the tools I'm going to show you now in a minute. The first one, at a guess, is using the layout app from Instagram and this one looks like it's using Frame Swag. And they're the two I'm going to show you. And firstly, Frame Swag. Um, this is an iPhone-only app. 
Um, what's nice about it is you can change the shape of the frame. So we've got one there with curved edges. You can have round frames. You can have square frames. You can change the width of the frame and the color of the background. So this is one I created, three pictures from a weekend I had in Dublin. Looks nice, doesn't mm. it? Um, but the photos weren't great on their own. But putting them together kind of told a little bit. It made them look a little bit more attractive. And this one I took at my personal favorite tourist attraction outside Ireland, um, which is the, the Doctor Who exhibition. And it's just four photos I took there put together to, again, I don't want to be flooding people's Instagram mm. feeds with all my pictures from the Doctor Who exhibition. So I just managed to take a few and put them together. If you use Android, Photo Grid is a really good app. It's also available for iPhone. And you can see it creates a kind of more funky kind of um, collage. So this Pigs on Parade, that was a thing they were doing in Dublin, I think maybe countrywide, where you had pigs, you know, all painted different colours and a lot of the different shots were showing them. Mm. So I went round, I took a few photos of that. The nice thing about Photo Grid is where you can put text on top. So mm. I put the Pigs on Parade hashtag there. And um, you've also got a number of stickers. So I put the pin it button there even though I don't think you can pin directly from Instagram not at the moment but it is supposed to be coming in I think yeah you can pin yeah. from my corner square actually yeah. which is one of them I'm going to talk to later so you know there yeah. is a way of doing that but there's lots of different ones there's smiley faces there's Facebook you know there's mm. there's interesting ones there um and there's another one I created with um kind of my 1980s I was trying to get Doctor Who in mm. at every possible available minute so this was my idea of driving in the 80s and then there's layout, and that's the one I showed you earlier that I think Eli Winebells were using for the oysters. And this is a really, really easy app to use. Instagram own it. Um, you can get it for iOS and Android, so it'll work on both Apple phones and Android phones. And all you need to do is you go in and you tap the number of photos you want to use from your photo library, and it just instantly creates a number of different formats that you can have it. So it will show you kind of long ones with square ones. And you can also do some really mad stuff with it. So you can make your cat look at itself and look really annoyed. Mm -hmm. um, so you can flip the photo backwards. So you can see some really interesting stuff has been created doing that. Um, but more the traditional Mont um, collage. So this is one from the Irish National Stud and their yearlings are about to go up for sale there. So anyone that's into horses, mm -hmm. definitely going worth visiting them now. And that's just a simple one they've been able to create from four photos just by tapping a button. And Instagram are really pushing this now. I notice if you don't have it installed on your phone, they're telling you there's a little button on the right-hand side above your filters with a little kind of collage layout, and it's saying install layout now. So it's really pushing this app. So now you've created all your content. Um, you've got a nice content up there, so you know that when people find you that they're going to want to follow you. Um, but how do you get those right people? And that can be a bit of a struggle on Instagram. You'll fi find it's relatively easy to attract people, but you need to make sure you're getting the right people. So the first thing is use hashtags. Hashtags is what it's all about on Instagram. If you don't use the hashtags, it'll be incredibly hard for anyone to find you. And use a lot. It's not like Twitter. People like me will tell you on Twitter, you can't use hashtags, more than two hashtags in a tweet. But on Instagram, you have to use between five and ten on everything that you put up there, um, which might seem like a bit of a slog. But this is you are identifying your photograph as being about someone. So if you have a dessert, for example, you might put dessert, cake, chocolate. You can see what sort of dessert I like there. And that will attract three different audiences of people that are actually searching the, those specific things on Instagram. So you can use tools like Webster and Tags for Likes that I'm gonna show you in a second for finding those hashtags. And the one note is that you can auto share your posts from Instagram to your Facebook page. If you are doing that, make sure you switch the hashtags or you put the hashtags in the comment. Don't put them in the caption when you originally upload it because people on Facebook don't like hashtags. Facebook like them, but people it looks like hashtags. It's a bit lazy when you see it on Facebook, yeah. seeing the hashtags. And, and people don't just... understand why they're there. Yeah. You know, me and you were on Facebook all the time. We could get yeah. this, but a lot of people don't understand why they're there and it just annoys them. The hashtags in the comments just look going to work in terms of the search. So it still works to, exactly yes yeah. so just because it's in a comment it doesn't mean that it's not clickable yeah. that it won't work so you can just totally leave them I know that you like putting hashtags in the text and I like putting them in the comments so if you look at our we teach social account you'll see there's a mixture of both going on there. I do find sometimes I'm in a hurry and I've posted the picture and I think oh I never put any hashtags in and then I go and I put them in the comments you know five yeah. minutes later so it's handy for that too. it is because I'd often do that as well because uh, one thing you should do is once you've identified the hashtags you're going to use most frequently you can save them into your notes app application on your phone mm -hmm. so then you can just go and copy and paste them so mm -hmm. what I usually do is I upload the photo and then I go back 
copy and paste them and just leave the relevant ones in. So um, you can search tags as well. And um, we're going to talk about regramming in detail later, just to be aware that regramming is like retweeting or a Facebook share, except it's not a function of Instagram. It's not something you can just do by clicking a button. You actually have to go through a quite a lengthy process to reshare someone's photograph. But we'll talk about that in a little while. And you should always use your own hashtag. So we have one. If you create any content as a result of watching this webinar and you'd like us to regram it, tag it with We Teach Social and you never know what might happen. Okay, so this is Webster, ugly website, but it's really, really useful. Um, and you can just go and search something. It's available on the web. So you, you can do this stuff through your phone, through the Instagram app, but sometimes that's a bit clunky, you know, mm. particularly if you want to do a lot of searches and a lot of typing. So you can just put in, I put in Ireland here to see what hashtags I got. And I got Ireland, Ireland Gram, Ireland 2014. So I can see the most popular tag with over 4 million posts tagged with it is Ireland. But um, it's definitely worth looking at Ireland Gram because that's a smaller mm. kind of community. Obviously, Ireland 2014 is out of date. You'd be yeah. wanting to look at 2015 now. And tags for likes, um, this you can get on the web or you can get it on your phone. You type in a search term. So I searched food. And it gave me a list of hashtags that people would use related to food. Now, just to be very aware, some of these hashtags you wouldn't want to use. So food and food porn, they're very popular hashtags. Food porn is like great looking food, by the way, in case you were wondering. Yum is a good one. But tagsforlikes.com, they put that in everything. And I, I wouldn't want that there. They want people just to copy the whole list, don't they? Exactly, and yeah. you don't notice it, you need to notice it and take it out. And also Instagood. It, and amazing you know yeah, they're too generic they're not specific about yeah. food so I would remove those ones as well yeah. so copy the list and then take just take out the ones that aren't interesting to you on Instagram you can do similar what I like about tags for likes is it brings in food hashtags that don't start with food because that's the problem when you search on any of the other tools is um, I type in Dublin and it only shows me hashtags that are related to that that start with the word Dublin mm. but there's some really popular ones there obviously Dublin's going to be the most popular with over 2 million um, we've got Dublin City there with 34,700 posts which is quite good Dublin O I'm just wondering what that is all about maybe that's something you need to check out and you can see there on Ireland as well we've got Ireland, Ireland Gram, Ireland Girl is quite popular as well um, Ireland 2014 um, and obviously Ireland 2015 is is not it's as popular getting yet there. it's getting <laughs> there quite December, won't it? Ireland Daily is an interesting one mm. as well it's only 6,000 posts but you can imagine those people would be looking at those mm. quite a bit so it, it's one that you might want to look at I've put together a bit of a list of ones I think you should be looking at from a tourism and a food point of view. So obviously there's the Fulcher Island ones there that they encourage for the, the different areas like the Wild Atlantic Way, Love Dublin. At the bottom there, Ireland's Ancient East, which is um, new. Um, Discover Ireland. You've got Discover well. Ireland. That's a really good one. That's mm. that's one I've I've been using quite a bit. Um, from your food point of view, you've got Irish food, Irish foodie, where to eat. Mm. local food so there are a few that you can look you at just see visitors to the country just doing searching for where to eat can't you you can so yeah so yeah. where am i where am i going to eat and they'll be following a lot of the accounts that be retweeting yeah. stuff that have these hashtags on as well or regramming um and this is an example then for visit dublin they've actually got their hashtag in their profile so they ask people to tag their posts love dublin and then they reshare the ones the best ones. Mm. And what's nice about this, it's not one person managing the account. This is a collaborative account and they've got a really eclectic mix of imagery going on because they're choosing the images that suit it best. So I think that's really clever. Um, and this I chose because I was in Putney at the beginning of the year. I took this photo in Putney. It's not a particularly good photo, but I took it. I tagged it Putney and I also um, geolocated it as being at Putney. And straight away, Putney Pies came in and they. Um, they liked my picture and that's all they needed to do. I'm looking for somewhere to have lunch. I'm in Putney. They know I'm in Putney because I've just tagged my photo Putney. They've got my attention. Mm -hmm. I think that's really clever. And that's that's kind of like one of the minimum things you need to do. And it goes back to me saying you can't just go and post content. You have to interact with people. And you should be commenting on posts as well. Mm -hmm. So if they've taken it one step further, it's saying it's a cold day. Why didn't you come in for a steak and kidney pie? You know, that yeah. would that would have been even better. We really would have started the conversation. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You would have felt welcomed going in then almost. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They were expecting me. Maybe they give me a discount. <laughs> um, and then there's regramming, which I spoke about before. So there is a specific etiquette to regramming. You do need to ask the person 
is it all right if you regram? So you need to go and find a photograph and leave a comment and say, hey, I'd like to regram this onto my account. Is that okay? And nine times out of 10, people will say yes. Um, and then once you've done that, you can just repost it up there. I'm going to show you a couple of apps that can help you with that later. Um, and then you'd have to copy the caption. It's a good idea to copy the caption as well of the thing that you're regramming. So you've got the whole essence of the post. And then make sure you're tagging tagging the person so make sure you're putting in the app username of the person that you took it from in the first place but staple foods do this a lot they do these amazing salads and they're big piles of food as you can see and they're very photogenic i don't know if they had instagram in mind when they created them but they should have done and so we're, people are always taking pictures of them so they have this constant stream of user generated content that they can use and some pancreas international as well train station as you know but it also has shops and restaurants you know it's a it's a very big facility now and they do a lot of regramming and again they have a beautiful building people are taking pictures of it all the time on the inside on the outside and they only regram the best and you've got to admit that's a pretty stunning picture isn't it mm -hmm. it's beautiful i can't work out which way up it's supposed to be i think you're the right way um <laughs> now um to regram that um, that way you need to use something like Hadgram, which i'll show you in a little while to download the picture because it's not easy to download a picture from instagram or you can regram with an app and you can see on this one it's put a watermark at the bottom and it's accredited the original user. I use that one actually, I've never really had the Yeah, it is. My only, the only downside of this is it masks some of the photograph. Mm, true. So, you know, it's I kind of sway between the two, but it is, it's a really useful tool to do and you still need to ask the permission before you mm. do it just because you're sticking a watermark over it. It's, it's not, you know, it's not okay. Um, but yes, it's really easy to use. I think it's a lot easier than doing it the other way. I just prefer not masking the photo, but it really depends on the photo because some of them like this, you're not losing anything mm. from that. Competitions. So um, I'm never a big fan of competitions on Instagram, but then I saw these two and I think they're actually quite good because they don't offend me when I see them. They're not over their top. Um, the first one there, I'm a big fan of brunch. So mm. anything with a, a poached egg and some hollandaise in is going to win my attention and it's easy to enter it's just like this photo and comment so they're it looking is. for interaction that's what they're looking absolutely, for absolutely yeah. yeah so don't make it too difficult to enter it's a good way to build followers and particularly with a with a prize like that it's brunch it's mm. not something ridiculous that you're going to get a load of spammy followers and it's a really good way to build interaction get mm. people interested in what you do so i'm actually hungry looking at that there mm. and the second one there this is a collaboration between um sandy mount hotel and wakeboarding and um, you can enter this competition with a chance to win that which i think is really cool um and i think i'm going to enter that one myself what do you have to do to enter that one I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have, have to tag. Tag them. Yeah. 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 So. That's easy enough to do. I, what I don't like are the competitions that ask you to, you know, tag friends, like, reshare, regram. You I'm like not mad on the regramming as well, because just because I'm not going to regram it if it's not interesting to my yeah. followers, because yeah, I feel thing. like I'm spamming them. Yeah. But both of those pictures, actually, particularly the, the piche, if that's how you mm. say it, that one I wouldn't mind regrabbing yeah. to my followers because it's a lovely image. Yeah. You know, that's kind of well, that's the message, you've got to make your images yeah. good. But I don't like the competitions that ask you to do six things. No yeah. matter how big You're the just prize not is. do it, yeah. really, are you? Um, okay, so then there's a big problem with Instagram, really, and that's how do you drive traffic to your website from it? And the problem is that there's only one link on your whole Instagram account that's clickable. And it's in your bio or in your profile. And you can only put one link in your bio. If you put two, one of them's not going to be clickable. So it really is you are relying on that one link. So you'll see a lot of people putting, and we do it a lot when we're promoting our courses or link in bio or link in profile as they have here. And then when you click through, there's the clickable link. That's where you can find the information from. You can also use short links. So um, we use Bitly quite a lot to promote our courses. So we would have, the, for the food event, for the example, I can tell you that the link for that is bit.ly forward slash follow the recipe. It's really easy for me to tell you. I could write that in my Instagram post and you would remember that long enough to go to your browser and type it in. The problem with this example is that they haven't customized the link. So it's bit.ly forward slash TW3BROJ. Yeah, and then I don't even know if the close bracket and the exclamation mark are part of the link. Yeah. So just make sure if you are doing this, if you are shortening your links, that you make it really, really memorable. 
And you can also add a link into your location. So you can create a custom location rather than saying where you took the photo. You can type in whatever you want to in that box. It's not clickable but it is a good way to remind people what the link is that they should be clicking. Mm -hmm. And I did actually, when I was doing research for this, I talked to Jen from Jen's Trends, who's like a, a, a oh, Instagram oh. expert, um, just to get her opinion on this. And this is what she said, um, not clickable, but a good way to reiterate a website link. So it is going to make it more memorable and make it easy to remember, as I said. Um, and it works really well if you're promoting an event page, a webinar, or something else, and you want to, you want, don't want that link in your bio. So for the event that we're doing at the moment, we need to keep our courses link in our bio mm -hmm. because that's, that's our main saying. business. But for the event, obviously, we want to be able to do that, so we can add that in then to uh, any photos that we create around that. So a couple of tools to help you manage your Instagram account because people are always like, well, it's hard to manage multiple accounts because basically you have to log in and out every single time you want to switch accounts. It's not like your Twitter that you can flip between or your Facebook business pages. So there's a tool that really can help you with that, which is Phonegram or Padgram. It's, even though it sounds like it's for iPhones and iPads, you can actually get it for Android devices as well. And that allows you to log in the more than one account at the time and switch between the two. And you can view the feeds. You can do your liking and commenting, etc. But you can't upload from there because it's not allowed. You're only, the only place you can upload to Instagram from is Instagram itself. And Iconosquare, which I'm actually totally in love with these days, is, it's a web-based app, but it's, it's full of really good features. And that's the one I'm going to show you first. So this is it. Um, it's got statistics. I think I'm always a little bit disappointed with Instagram statistics because what I really want to know is how many people have looked at my photo. Mm. And you, ne you can't see that, but you can see a lot of in-depth information, you know, about your most liked posts, how many people are following your follow rate over time. Um, you can like and comment so you can get your Instagram feed into Iconosquare. Um, there's a tool that lets you add a tab to your Facebook page. You can use the search function just like on Webster to find hashtags and people to follow. Um, what I really like is you can create groups within Iconosquare, a bit like Twitter lists. Mm -hmm. So if you've got different groups of customers, so if you've got, say, food bloggers that you're following and you've got competitors, you can put those into two different lists and you can make sure that the important people are there on a list so you're not going to miss their posts. You can interact with them. Um, you can regram from it, and when you do that, you choose the picture, it watermarks it, and it emails it to you. So then you can pick it up on your phone and post it to Instagram. So that's kind of good. And obviously, it's love to ask permission. Oh, yeah. Always, yeah. always have to ask permission, yeah. Um, and as a widget, you can get to your website as well to add a feed to your website. So it's a really nice tool. And then this is a padgram or phone gram. Um, it lets you like and comment on multiple accounts, as I said. You can subscribe to hashtags. So this is really useful. So you could subscribe to the Love Dublin hashtag and you can go in, you just click a button, you can see all the hashtags in one place, uh, all the photos with the hashtags in one place and uh, click on them as you want. You can download photos from here without any watermarking on. But remember, always ask permission first. Um, and it actually tells you when you go to download it, it tells you yeah. that you don't own the photo, which I think is good, mm. you know. Um, and you can subscribe to users. So if there's one specific user that you, you need to keep a really strong eye on, you can subscribe to those. Um, so that's kind of your sidebar. You can see I'm subscribed to Love Dublin, The Word Atlantic Way, and I in that one there. So on to Pinterest, Lorna. All right, Pinterest. Now, for those of you who are what who might be thinking, you know, what is the main difference between between Instagram and Pinterest in terms of using them? I suppose what people tend to say is Instagram is where you get a lot of engagement. On Pinterest, people don't tend to comment, but it's great for getting traffic to your website. Mm -hmm. So that is just two very basic um, differences between the two. Um, but in this now, I'm going to show you, explain Pinterest to you and show you lots of great examples for how you can use it for your own business. So what is Pinterest? Well, for Pinterest, the owners of Pinterest actually say it's not a social network. That's actually what they say. They say that people use Pinterest to plan their lives. So they use Pinterest to, to find images for beautiful places to go, say they're coming to Ireland, going to the Wild Atlantic Way, they will find beautiful images on the web or within Pinterest itself, and they will create a board and it will say, you know, my holiday to Ireland. And they will put in all the pins for all the places they want to visit. And then when they finish doing that, they'll actually sit and look at all the pins and decide where am I going to go, what am I going to eat, what's close to each other, etc. People do the same with books, what to read, etc. But, you know, in terms of tourism and food, people are going to use it to, um, to plan their holidays. 
This is an example of one particular account, Herbie and Carney. It's a food business. Um, and what, what they have done is they've created a number of boards, which you will be doing as well. And then they're putting the relevant pins into each board. So, for example, you've got one there, raw food recipes and tips. So the target market for that is people are looking for the recipes. Easy weekend breakfast stuff. Perfect for those who are planning, you know, what am I going to have for a Saturday morning? That's going to be quick to, to create. But why should you use Pinterest? Well, again, it's it's growing really fast. It's one of the top three growing social networks in Ireland. Uh, worldwide, it's not quite as big as Instagram, but there's 73 million users. And if women are your target market, now the number of men using Pinterest is definitely growing, but the number of women, you know, really outweighs the number and of men. And they're well off women as well, aren't they? Yeah, they've done they've done research into it, and you know, if your target market is your American lady who's you know got who's educated with a good income, you know, she's definitely on Pinterest, particularly we, we the mummies. We all want those. Yeah, we do. She, she she's definitely on Pinterest. Um, the other be benefit of Pinterest is that when you pin or somebody else pins from your website, okay, and if other people reshare that, if they repin it, it doesn't matter how many times it's been repinned, it will still contain the source to your website page. So anybody clicks on that pin, people, they know that they're going to be brought to your website where they can book the meal, get the recipe, um, buy your product, whatever it is. And the other huge benefit of Pinterest is that pins last for a long time. And by that, I mean, if you put up a tweet or you put up a Facebook update, it lasts minutes or it lasts hours. With pins, they last for months. I'm still getting lots of traffic to my website from pins that I posted months and months ago. You know, and as long as your blog post or your material is still on your website, people can go and pin from it and then that can last six months. And the beauty of it is if somebody who's influential pins your pin, it can just take off a life of its own again. So, you know, it can, it can really go viral. So pins last for a long, long time. Um, so in terms of talking about getting those reshares, OK, what, what you want with Pinterest is you want lots and lots of people to re, to pin from your website, but also to repin that content so that more and more people can see it and it gets more traffic to your website. So what do you do to do that? Well, first thing is the images have to be attractive. They have to stand out amongst all those other thousand pin, thousands of pins in people's gallery pages. And you can see this one, the tiramisu cupcake. You know, it's very clear. Um, you know, I just want to reach it now and bite it, really. <laughs> um, it's very clear. But also, do you notice the shape of it? It's portrait shape. With the Pinterest gallery, you've got it's all in columns. And the size of the photograph that's shown is determined by the width. So your photographs need to be long and narrow rather than wide. And also your, your, your product needs to be clear. Um, and it's not just about food either. I found this particular packaging for this cheese and I thought this really stands out, you know. And, you know, from seeing it on Pinterest, if I was to see that in a shop, I wouldn't even want to taste it. You know, as a trial, I would just want to buy it and, mm -hmm. and bring it home. So, you know, packaging is also important um, as well as the actual the actual food product. It's thinking of a way to make it to make your photograph stand out. Um, now, these two photographs, they aren't the best in terms of their image quality. The one on the left is water, watermelon berry sor sorbet. That would look a lot nicer if it was on top of an ice cream cone or something. It doesn't look that appetising, but it's had 102 repins. Why? It's because of the caption. No ice cream machine needed. Perfect for a summer treat. So I'd say that has been repinned by people who are planning you know, food for, the, for their summer holidays when the kids are off and people who don't have an ice cream machine. You know, so it's promising convenience. And you know that all you've got to do is click that pin and it's going to bring you to the recipe of how to make it. Um, the one on the right, the world's best chocolate cake. The text is on the image. OK, again, the picture isn't that great. And I love the way they have in brackets because people will go, really? The world's best? No, really, it is. And it's had almost 2000 repins, you know. So the text, be it whether it's in the caption or on top of the, on, actually put on the photograph is really important. It's just as important as the quality of the image, really. So don't forget your words on Pinterest, too. Now, Rich Pins. This is an application that you can add to your website. Um, and this is really, so for example, say you have a restaurant business and you want to share some recipes and you want people to think, oh, you know, they're really generous restaurant. They're giving, some of our, they're giving us some recipes. I want to try it. And people find they don't make it as nice. So they go back to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, what this does is you can see the little avatar underneath the photograph. People know then that it is a rich pin. And what that means is they actually they know when they click into the, onto the image so it enlarges in the second page, they're actually given the recipe. 
True. Okay. Now there's two there's two secrets to success on Pinterest. Your your pins have to be beautiful, and they ha or they have to be useful. And if you can incorporate both, you're onto a winner. This pin is attractive. Okay, but it's also useful because it gives the the recipe. So that's going to get lots of repins. Pinterest search is wonderful. Okay, it's it's you know it's great from a user point of view. For example, for here, what, so imagine you've got a visitor who's coming to the burn and they're wondering where to eat in the burn. Okay, they put in burn food, and what comes up? We're focusing on boards with this one, but what's coming up is the boards with lots of pins within them. And we see here just some small businesses that we recognise, isn't it? Our gourmet deli and burn fine wine. Um, so for people planning their trips, okay, you've got to think about the search terms that you're going to use in your boards and your pins. But people aren't necessarily going to Google anymore to search, even though Pinterest boards come up on Google. They're actually using Pinterest search. I find Pinterest search brilliant myself. I, I don't use Pinterest as much as you, as you know, but I mm. do find the search really, really useful. Because, and it's all visual, what you can see yeah, there as well. Exactly. You know, people yeah. can see what the restaurant looks like or what the food looks like. And Google then whether to they're going to be watching out for that, I'd say. Yeah, no, Pinterest search is it's absolutely wonderful. Um, now... You've got your beautiful pins. You've got your useful pins. How are you going to get more followers to your account? As I mentioned, you've got to use gorgeous images. Suppose you're selling wedding cakes. The photographs, they've got to be beautiful. People are planning their wedding. They want a gorgeous looking cake. Um, the other thing about Pinterest actually is pinning little and often is really important. And by that, I mean, you don't want to flood uh, other people who are following you. You don't want to flood their homepage with like 20 pins that look, look very similar it's almost like spamming um, but also you do it often so that you can that your followers that are logging into Pinterest at different times can have a chance of seeing your, your, pins your brand as well. is always in front of their face exactly yeah You've always got a chance of seeing it exactly um, using captions is important because of the Pinterest search okay you've got to have the keywords there in terms of naming um, in terms of naming your your images really and also in terms of um, using keywords in your board descriptions as well. Now, this is what this this um, photograph is about, using in Pinterest interests for targeted keywords. You've got somebody who's looking for a wedding cake. Okay. What Pinterest has done is it has created an interest list there telling us, okay, what are the most popular keywords people are looking for when they're searching. So, for example, there's lots of people looking for a vintage wedding cake. So if you've made a vintage wedding cake, or whatever your product is, you've got to put vintage wedding cake into your caption and maybe even create boards with a vintage wedding cake. So you wouldn't have to be a cake business to do that, though. You could be uh, you could be selling wedding dresses exactly. and create a vintage, if your wedding dresses are vintage style, you could create yeah. a vintage, vintage wedding cake. Yeah, what, great. From a business point of view, say if you're a wedding photographer or a hotel, obviously, that's having weddings, is you want to have boards that your target marketer is interested in. So they know if they go to that wedding photographer that they're going to have brilliant ideas for photographs. But they're also one-stop shop and showing you know what sort of wedding dresses bridesmaid dress ideas you know you're, you're creating mm -hmm. stuff that your target market is interested in but the pinterest interests really helps to show you really shows you what people are searching for yes cool. so do research that when you're thinking of names for your boards as well as uh, writing your captions for your for your pins now, how do you attract visitors to your particular area? Well, one way, of course, is to put the product product name in within the photograph. We've got this macar macar macaroons. Macaroons, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I would say macaroon, macaroons. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful box, mm -hmm. uh, but I really like the way they have the name of the of the creator on them on it as yeah. well. Um, and this was an account from Pure Michigan, and again, it's showing you know all of their boards have got the word Michigan in them to to help the searchability but you know you've got the michigan beaches you also cover michigan agriculture michigan beer and breweries if you're planning on that kind of a holiday you know focus on what what your target market might be interested in and name your boards accordingly and visit savannah is a fabulous um, example of a, of, a, of, a, of a good account and you can see at the bottom right hand where both of them actually sweet savannah treats and savannah dining they've both got a little two-person icon in the top right-hand corner above the board mm -hmm. and what that means is it's a group board so for example in savannah dining they have invited other restaurants in the particular area 
to join that board and to contribute their photographs of their food or of their venue to that board. So if you're visiting Savannah, you just click into that and it's got, you know, hundreds, well, tens and th tens and hundreds of restaurants where you can go. But by doing that, you're collaborating with other businesses, you're working together and you're providing your target market with the information that they're looking for. And that works really well if you're in tourism, because mm -hmm. if somebody comes to your restaurant, they want to know where to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or vice versa. Some come to the hotel, they'll be asking where should I go for mm. food. So if you've got them all in one spot, that really helps. And you can do that on Pinterest before they even visit. Yeah. And if it comes you come across as helpful then as well. So yeah. Say I want absolutely. to go there. Definitely. Oh, and this is an example of that, isn't it? Yes, exactly. This is where Inter Intercontinental Hotel in Dublin have done. Um, they have created a board, okay, showing people where they can places to visit within Dublin. So you've got the four courts, the Halfpenny Bridge, St. Patrick's Cathedral, but they've made it really handy in that by using place pins, and it's very easy to do this on Pinterest, you don't have to do anything with your website, the person can plan their journey, how far, you know, each place is from each other. So they can plan their itinerary for a day by no, using a I place board. Seduction in the city, mm. so it's obviously romantic walks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's nice, isn't it? And the photographs are lovely, the way, that, the way it's been lit up. It's very clever. But it's really helping your tourist, your visit, yes. visitor to plan their And in the day. same way you would when you were actually in the hotel as yeah. well. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a concierge service on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Um, Pin Groupie. This is a website, okay, where you can visit. You can type in food. And it, what it will bring up is a list of all the group boards for food. Okay. And then what you can do is you can click in, as I've done with this one, food and drink recipes. I can decide, OK, it's 42,000 followers. It's got 11,000 contributors to it. Do I want to become a contrib contributor as well so that I can reach that target market? Because mm -hmm. you know your target market are following the food board. Yeah. OK, so what I suggest you do is you do that with a few. OK, and after a month. I'll show you how in a minute how to look at analytics to decide whether you want to stay in that board or not, because it's very easy to leave boards as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, remember I talked a minute ago about scheduling with little and often or, you know, pinning little and often. Yeah. OK, but you don't want to sit on your laptop all of the time, pinning from your website and pinning from other sites and repinning, etc. Now, with Tailwind, you can actually pin schedule the pins but you can also schedule repins okay so you can hit it at different times of the day and if your target market are five or ten hours behind you in terms of time zone as well it's really it's really handy tool to use right all you do is i've gone to the herbie and carney website in this example on the right hand side you can see i've got the tailwind um little button up in my browser so i just click that to schedule it um, I could decide what board to put it to. I could choose more than one board if I want to. I'm putting it into the recipes board. I could change the description if I want. Um, I can add it to a queue or I can choose a custom time for it to go out. And I suggest that, that, you know, choosing a custom time. Once you know when your target markers are online, you know, stagger them out. And it also actually allows you to schedule them out every 10 minutes if you want to as well, which is really you handy. Um, Pinstamatic, that's a handy tool as well. Um, what this does, okay, is that you can actually create pins from tweets, from calendars, from screenshots from your website, and it's also you can create it from maps. Okay, so if, for example, you wanted to um, bring attention to an event that's happening in a particular place, so you can take the image from a website, you can create the, the place, the map to show where it is, and you can create, use the calendar to show what time or what date is happening. Oh, yeah, cool. So it's a really, really handy tool for, for, actually, creating, for actually creating the pins. Now, this is handy because one of the beauties of Pinterest is that people can pin from your website. And actually, I would really recommend that you add a pin it button to all of your website pages and particularly if you're selling products as well because people are people are worried am i allowed to pin you know in terms of copyright mm -hmm. but also having the pin it button there reminds them to pin okay so pin alerts what this does is it notifies you you can set it up daily weekly or as it happens it notifies you by email when somebody pins from your website and what i like about it is it tells you who is pinned and it tells you what board they've pinned it to so as a business owner, you can actually look at their account then and you can decide, do I want to follow this person? Will I thank them for pinning? How will I engage with them? 
OK, and the best thing to do is really to follow the board that they've pinned it to, um, because if they've pinned from your website, they're probably interested enough to actually follow you back if they haven't done so already. Um, this is what I, I mentioned, um, monitoring the group boards a minute ago. Pinterest analytics is a really like there's so much information in it. I could spend the whole hour talking about all the information. But what the screen grab I've taken here is I'm looking at my boards with the top pin impressions. Now, I could also look on, at it under the clicks to the website, under repins, likes, etc. But what I'm looking at here is my top top um, four board, six boards in terms of impressions. And th three of them that have the arrows there, they're all group boards. So, for example, Pinterest Day, OK, I know if I pin on, on the topic of Pinterest to that, the, to that group board, that I'm probably going to get a lot of impressions, clicks and repins. Mm. OK, the bottom one, Pinterest community, you know, the, the repins from that recently in the last 30 days have only been six. So that's a board I might consider leaving. OK, actually, I'd never noticed how good uh, shared boards were before. I don't think I'm in any apart from ones I share with you. Yeah, no, it's, that's it's pretty convincing. It's it's very useful. But what I would say is join a couple, join three or four group boards that show up on your on your account. And then in 30 days time. You can go into your analytics and see how they're yeah. performing. And you can say, do I leave these? Do yeah, I join exactly. more? What have you? That's brilliant. Um, yeah, because what you want is a board with lots, lots of interaction. Yeah. And the click-throughs to the website as well. Definitely going to go and join some of those now. Um, here's some examples of some good um, Instagram tourism accounts. Texas Tourism, and what I really, their whole account is brilliant, but what I like in the, in the top row of their boards is Texas To Do in 2015. Um, so somebody's planning on going there, whether they're you know a local visitor or an international visitor, it's given suggestions on, on what they can actually do. Oh, it's like and, a cool roller coaster, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. They haven't got that many pins in it though. It's only fifty. I mean, I think they could be doing a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. But I really like the title, the title behind it. Um, Pure Michigan, which I mentioned before, I really like the celebrating in Pure Michigan. It kind of gives a carnival feel to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's nice biking and hiking. If you're into that you know it's going to be before you go i just i'm i'm always unclear if hashtags work in uh pinterest i can see they're using one there in their uh bio yeah it the, they don't recommend them to be honest because when you put pinterest search is set up for words right as well okay. as for hashtags yeah. you know um and sometimes you see people using them you know I th it's a bit like twitter you can use one or two but your caption has to be words that make sense it has to be words that are in a sentence so if you want to use a hashtag within a sentence or one at the end that's fine but to be honest pinterest search is so good you don't need it you don't need it mm -hmm. it's, it's what you need to do it's is, more like google than twitter yeah or instagram exactly right. what we need to be doing is using the pinterest interests to mm -hmm. find out what words people are searching for the most popular words people are searching for on pinterest and use those relevant ones within your caption yeah, yeah, that's another huge difference between Pinterest and, and yeah, Instagram. Instagram yeah. you know, Instagram's all about hashtags. Sorry, Instagram, Pinterest yeah. isn't. Pinterest is about being beautiful and about being useful. You know, and if you fit both in, that's brilliant. Um, Visit Savannah is another beautiful account. Um, and what I liked about their top row here is the top left they've got Savannah travel tips because when people are travelling somewhere. They want to know the tips, you know, what currency do I need to bring? Um, what's the expected price for spending on a meal? You know, how do we how do I travel around? Is it bus, is it tram, you know, etc. Yeah. And you can also see that they've made this a group board as well. So they've brought in other businesses um, to provide those those travel tips as well. And you'll find a lot of the pins will have text on top of them that will say like five tips for traveling to Savannah. And I will link to a blog post which that gives them the five the five tips. So again, it's a great way of getting people to your website in order to get them to, to actually book that holiday. And Dublin Zoo, which is a fun one, but what I like is you know it's it's really you know focusing on the particular animals. So if you really like giraffes, you're going to have lots of pictures there. Um, and what they, they do actually as well is that they will um, include photographs that people have sent them to. As well, sometimes yeah, cool. if the photographs are really high standards, they will do that too. So, the takeaways. takeaways. So we've rushed through that. Um, of course, you can do one of our online courses if you want to know more. Um, but just some takeaways, things you should go and do now you've watched this webinar. So for Instagram, you need to go and make yourself a list of hashtags that you'll be using frequently. Remember, you can save them to your phone, onto your notes app, so that they're just there for you to copy and paste. You don't need to remember them. Create a collage because those tools are really fun and it's a great way for showcasing images. 
Find content to regram, so make that part of your Instagram strategy to go and decide what sort of content could you regram and why would you do it, and then go out and ask people. And just don't forget, it's a conversation. It's not just you pushing out your message. Go out there, talk to users, get involved in the conversations on their, their posts. If something attractive, if you feel like saying something, if you see a nice image, talk to the person about it. It's a great way to meet people. And with Pinterest, the main points really are make when you're putting up images on your web on Pinterest, make sure that they're portrait. Because a lot of tourism businesses actually have landscape photographs in their galleries or on their websites. Panoramas work, I so suppose, yeah. yeah, they do. But for, for people pinning them, you know, they're, they're going to be very small. So have the combination right. of images on your on your website. So on your website, you should always have a portrait. Mm. image for everything that you do yeah. as well as whatever else you have yeah. going okay yeah, exactly um, and add those pin it buttons to your website so you're reminding people that they can't and confirming that they're allowed to pin mm -hmm. from your website join a group board or even better create one yourself and invite people to join it you know create one and invite other businesses in your area that are also targeting tourists invite them to join it so that you can provide those travel tips or whatever it might be to your visitors and the last one pin Little and often.